It's April 2020, and this is Corps Talk, the Norfolk District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers official podcast. I'm your now homebound host, Andy, and uh, as you can tell, this is not business as usual. The Norfolk District, like the rest of the world, is figuring out how to navigate during the global pandemic that is COVID-19. So while we're still committed to delivering the mission, we're doing so in creative and uncharted ways. Core Talk is still going to bring you the people, programs, and projects of the Norfolk District, as well as our district news update and our Great Places to Work segment. Remember to reach out to us, especially now. Um, if you have a best practice that you or your agency has implemented that you think we could all benefit from, please reach out to us. We are in the process of creating that new normal, and we're going to ask our listeners to help us with that. So for this episode, Patrick was able to have a conversation with one of our members who's out there working with the local, state, and federal partners to respond to the needs of the people during COVID-19. I had a call with our Deputy District Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Sams, so I can get a peek at what it was like when all the information was coming down uh, about what was going on in the world, and he had to make those decisions to keep his people safe, but still be able to execute the mission. All right, so let's kick off this not business as usual episode. So I'd like to welcome back to Core Talk, uh, Mr. Tom Booth. You are becoming quite the regular on our program. Yes, I guess I am. Thanks for having me back, Patrick. So uh, this time I want to talk to you uh, about uh, the work that we've been doing uh, in the field to support FEMA and the state with our planning and assessment teams. And you've been kind of, uh, well, not kind of, you've actually been leading one of those teams. Uh, talk to me about what you've been doing. Uh, sh sure. So we are conducting assessments of uh, facilities around the Commonwealth for use as potential alternative care facilities in support of our FEMA mission uh, in response to the COVID pandemic. There are actually uh, two types of facilities that um, you're evaluating. Is, is that correct? Yes, correct. So we're, we're looking at arena style facilities, large open type spaces to be converted to potential alternative care sites, uh, as well as kind of hotel dormitory style facilities. So hotels, dormitories that are in universities uh, where the individual rooms could potentially be used as uh, hospital beds. And as far as the, those items that you're looking at, uh, they have to meet some certain requirements for them to actually be um, considered and th those recommendations forward onto the state. What are those requirements? We're assessing the facilities and its infrastructure to make sure it meets, meets certain requirements, such as not having asbestos, uh, mold, or other hazardous materials in it, that it has an operational and compliant fire protection system, um, and an electrical system is operational and even able to be expanded upon uh, so it can be increased to meet the needs of some of the medical equipment. We're looking at the layout of the facility to ensure it can uh, support um, some of the staff and um, operational areas uh, that the hospital is going to need, and as well as determining an initial uh, bed ca capacity if it should be used in a non-acute or acute uh, capacity. And you talk talk to me about uh, some of the um, the processes here. That uh, it, you know, the Corps of Engineers isn't just running out willy-nilly, finding uh, buildings uh, based off of community suggestions, there's an actual process involved, correct? Right. So VDEM is working in partnership with FEMA to identify locations within the Commonwealth. And then we take a look at those from a higher level to make sure they're kind of meeting the initial business rules from what we can tell from just basic research. Uh, once we've determined that they do, we'll deploy a team to, to that facility to assess it. And once we complete an assessment, we'll compile a report which provides our overall recommendation to the state and FEMA of uh, whether that facility should be uh, considered for an alternative care facility or not. And if it is, uh, you know, and ultimately at the very end too, the as I understand it, the, the Corps of Engineers doesn't uh, choose which facilities. That is completely up to the state to make those final decisions, correct? Yeah, correct. We are just recommending whether the facility is capable or not of being used as an alternative care facility. So as far as, the, you know, the, the team makeup, how, how big are the teams that are going out to do these assessments with the Corps? Uh, so it depends on the facility, but in general, they're between five and seven. Uh, we tend to have 
on the team, uh, mechanical and electrical, which are some of the more important aspects that we're looking at. We have an architect, a structural engineer, civil engineer, um, and others, sometimes environmental scientists if need be, and other um, specialists, depending on what the facility specifics are. And, and, and just give me a sensing of, uh, you know, the, 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 the feeling amongst the, our, our employees and how they, they feel to be a part, and, and even for you, how you feel to be a part of this, uh, this uh, important mission. So I, I'm extremely proud. I, I, I enjoy working for the Army Corps of Engineers, and this is just one way uh, that I can serve my nation. I feel like most of the team members feel similarly, uh, doing our part uh, to help the nation in this crisis. For those uh, uh, teammates that were on the, the assessment teams, um, the state has made a decision now on, on a facility or, or a few facilities. Um, what are they doing now? So the teams that have assessed these facilities are most familiar with them. So they're actively involved now in preparing them uh, to be converted. And then when they are in the process of being converted and possibly even operation, they're also going to be involved in the oversight, ensuring that everything's being done uh, per the requirements and, and safely as possible. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. They're going to they're dedicated and going to be with this uh, effort through the end. And this is all uh, really on a hyper fast timeline, correct? Is, is we don't have all the time in the world to to, to sit and, and guide this through the process. We're we're moving fast. A absolutely, we typically see construction in terms of months and years. Uh, in this situation, we're talking days and weeks. Uh, this is we're moving fast, and it's vitally important work. And I, I know that um, having been out with the teams and seeing it firsthand that the, they're 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 totally dedicated and are really uh, proud to be a part of the mission. And I want to thank you uh, for being a team lead and being out there as well as coming on the program. Um, and one final question, is there something that you want to add that I may have forgotten to ask? I'd like to say that this is the Army Corps of Engineers' number one priority. We are working with FEMA uh, to get ahead of this pandemic crisis, and I'm proud to be a part of that team. Well, once again, I want to thank you uh, for joining uh, us on Core Talk, and I just want to also for the listeners out there, um, this is not our normal setup. Uh, we are doing a Skype call, uh, completely in two separate areas, uh, and normally we have a studio set up with, with microphones. And so, um, if there's some some audio differences from what you've heard in past programs, uh, you know we're 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 embracing social distancing as well, uh, even on our podcast. So. Uh, once again, Tom, thank you for joining us, and uh, keep up the great work. No, thank you. And just to point out, our teams are doing the same, uh, keeping that distance and sanitizing and cleaning as they go, doing their best. So at the time of this recording, on April 9th, USACE has awarded 20 contracts for alternate care facilities across 11 states, completed more than 900 site assessments of the 1,077 total assessments requested. 40 FEMA missions have been received, totaling approximately $1.7 billion. We have more than 15,000 personnel engaged across our enterprise. All right, so let's move on to the piece I recorded with our district deputy commander, Lieutenant Colonel Sims. So I'm on the line with Lieutenant Colonel Sams, the uh, district deputy commander. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. It's an excellent day. Thank you. Uh, thank you for virtually meeting with me. I know we had a couple hiccups this week, uh, or today, network issues and, and things like that, but we're pushing forward. Yeah, uh, we are definitely learning how to, you know, connect to VPN and do everything we do virtually. So it's, uh, it's an interesting time for sure. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a lesson in patience, if nothing else. Um, so, um, why don't you give our listeners a, a you know, quick background about yourself, um, about your current position, and some of your general roles and responsibilities at the district? Uh, sure. All right. Uh, well, so my career uh, has a lot of variety in it, um, you know, from time as an airborne paratrooper jumping out of planes to armored brigade combat team, you know, fighting out of those uh, Bradley fighting vehicle or those armored vehicles that we have. And then kind of sprinkled in that career is really some technical time at either Corps of Engineers, Department of Public Works, um, you know, and really a uh, wide variety of 
of different roles. My current role is the deputy commander of the Norfolk District Army Corps of Engineers, uh, where we have approximately 390 military and civilian personnel in an annual program, about $450 million that uh, is for construction, engineering, and real estate support for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And really on roles, so first I'm here to help the commander and the executive staff provide leadership and direction of kind of large, complex, professional military and civilian workforce that we have um, that's really comprised of engineers, scientists, project managers, and all manner of support staff. Man. And on top of all that, you have, what, two little ones, right? I do. A five and a seven-year-old. One's about to have a birthday here in a couple of days. And, and I'll tell you what, that uh, I would not be surprised if in the background you hear, you know, some kids running around or hitting each other or, you know, doing all kinds of crazy things while trying to work. Oh, yeah. I can hear one of mine clomping down the steps right now. So what, what's that been like um, with, you know, you're dealing with all this stuff in the district and then you've got the little ones, too, who, you know, who, who, uh, who you're taking care of. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I think you just got to focus time on them when you can. Uh, you know, we got... The past month really been fast and furious, but, um, you know, trying to spend a little bit of time, you know, hey, here you go. Here's your work that you have online. You know, here's, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest, you know, when uh, really need to get something done or the boss is calling me, you're like, all right, here's the remote. And to be honest, they're up there right now watching TV and, you know, plugged in so I don't have to worry about them distracting me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know we're like we're figuring it out. We're trying to you know we're everybody's in a, a bit of a survival mode. Um, so let's get into kind of what led us up to to this point. Walk me through um the timeline of how the district responded as the news of COVID nineteen was being released. Sure. Um, so I, I think it first all started uh, the seventh of March when we had our first case in Virginia. And that was the Fort Belvoir case and. Uh, really, um, so you, it kind of took me by surprise a little bit that, you know, it's been 31 days, I think, because it's been so busy and, you know, getting after the mission while protecting people, um, you know, it's just gone by so fast. So really, I'm going to break it down into a, a few chunks. Um, really, the first seven days, it was really about communicating to the workforce and trying to kind of relieve, you know, the anxiety or stress that they might be feeling uh, you know, telling them to stay home if they feel sick and working through telework, you know, VPN challenges and uh, kind of communicating, you know, following the CDC guidance of washing their hands, you know, avoid touching nose, hand or mouth. Um, and really uh, kind of, um, you know, the public affairs team actually helped out, too, by, uh, you know, creating flyers. We called it the no handshake zone and you know, just putting stuff around so people realize it, that, you know, we're no longer in the same environment we have and we have to adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, now, really, then then it transitioned quickly. And I think Governor Cuomo uh, asked the Army Corps of Engineers up in New York District to get involved. And that really kicked off um, the, the alternate care facility um, mission where we uh, figured out from an Army Corps of Engineer, you know, what capabilities and solutions we have across all of USACE, you know, bring in some hospital expert, bring in construction experts and develop really a standard design uh, that we could apply to hotels or arenas in order to, uh, you know, quickly develop, you know, alternate care facilities to kind of relieve the press or relieve the pressure that is on all the hospitals right now where they're doing tremendous work, but some of the hospitals are, you know, working through, um, you know, patient care. So anything we could provide in additional beds would be mm -hmm. awesome for it. And simultaneously to trying to figure out that mission, we also, the, the next real iteration of, um, you know, the timeline really kicked off on the 24th of March where we started alternate care facility assessments across the state of Virginia, really knocking out a uh, total 86 assessments across Virginia. Uh, you know, and that's all the way from Southwest Virginia and Abingdon, Virginia, all the way to the Northern Virginia and in the Hampton Roads 
Part of that was a significant planning in Virginia with the IMAT and, and NAFAC forces, uh, bringing NAFAC uh, electrical, mechanical, and structural engineers into the into the team that's conducting assessments while simultaneously also getting the contracting and uh, design teams stood up and ready to uh, execute this hard mission. In, in all of that, what in your opinion have been some of the biggest challenges um, that we're looking at right now um, and then into the future? Well, Andy, what I would say is how to increase or free up bed space at a rate greater than the speed of coronavirus. That's really what we have been doing for the you know past 30 days. And, and not only doing that, but also how do you take care of your people while simultaneously doing that, that allows us to accomplish the mission. And, and really how we did it is working with a, uh, you know, the local, state, and federal partners that we have, all the way from the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association to v Virginia Department of Health, Virginia Department of Emergency Management, uh, HHS, uh, and, and, you know, uh, of course, uh, we work under FEMA, but uh, really bringing that team together and trying to figure out uh, how is the best way to, you know, do our part in the whole government approach um, by converting facilities and really took, you know, some guidance from the, the state on location. So really started looking at Northern Virginia Richmond area and Hampton Roads and really building out, uh, you know, convention center. So the arena to healthcare option that we have and uh, really um, creating that synergy that both that everything that uh, patients might need are all brought into the same location at the same time. I don't know how you keep all those parts, those parts moving, but it, it, you know, it sounds like we have a good relationship with a lot of other agencies. I mean, to, to, to you know, to, point out something positive about this whole, this whole thing. Yeah, no, our, our relationships are awesome. And here's what I'll, I'll, I'll say about, um, uh, you know, something positive. I, I, I truly believe that Norfolk district has a, a great, um, workforce. Uh, I was, you know, kind of thinking about all the accomplishments in the past 30 days, really, uh, the 15th of March is when this whole thing kicked off when Governor Cuomo asked us to, you know, solve the nation's toughest problem being coronavirus. And in those 24 days since, since uh, he asked the USACE to get involved, really a tremendous amount of uh, problem solving, you know, incorporating, uh, you know, healthcare professionals and engineer professionals, creating a standard design, learning lessons from other districts that have started construction, taking that all into effect and uh, really large contracts that normally take a year to design, a year to construct, crunching that all down into 24 days in order to, you know, hopefully here in a, a couple of days, award contracts for alternate care facilities at three different locations on top of closing the building for a week, uh, you know, working our way through uh, VPN and, you know, telecommunication kind of issues and getting everybody back online, used to operating in, in an environment. Not only that, we've also been able to execute some of our normal delivery projects. For example, we executed a $3.2 million uh, DLA uh, renovation project that uh, about a million dollars of DODIA SRM contracts, AIWW, so the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway Service contract, we were able to award that contract. We have two dredging projects ongoing with a third being awarded during this time. Uh, Sandbridge uh, Hurricane Protection Project, I heard today that uh, sand will start flowing uh, to protect the beaches from future hurricanes. Uh, we were able to execute a AE Industry Day uh, virtually uh, with all our AE partners thinking about the future designs that the Corps of Engineers might have. And it's just absolutely fabulous job of being able to not only 
stand up these teams and get after 86 assessments and three large construction projects that hopefully will get awarded in a couple of days, but also deliver our program and keep it moving. Awesome job by the, the really the employees of Norfolk District. And that's a strong takeaway, I, I think, from this that, you know, yes, we deliver the miss- mission, but we also have creative thinkers and hard workers that can say, you know, that are able to be flexible enough, to say, all right, we got to figure out a different way to make X, Y, and Z happen, and then go ahead and make X, Y, and Z happen. So Norfolk District is all about engagement. Uh, not only our stakeholders out there, DOD installations, uh, anybody in Virginia, we would love to hear from you. Um, feel free to submit questions on our Facebook page. We love uh, receiving those. And we also um, have an email address down in the show notes where we'll take your questions. We want your feedback. We want to know how this podcast can be improved. We want to know how we can do stuff better. And uh, definitely, if you have any questions, let us know and we'll try to get you the answer. Perfect. Thanks so much for uh, tackling multiple obstacles. <laughs> today to get this uh to make this interview come into fruition all right andy take a have a good day and watch those little ones all right you too okay bye-bye sir so now it's time to look into opportunities for you to come and work with us in our great places to work segment at the time of this recording we are currently advertising for a gs 1112 financial management analyst that is going to be hired under direct hire authority go over to our website look in the careers section and you'll see that there we also have multiple other direct hiring actions available at this time to include our pathway student trainee program as well as construction scheduler construction quality assurance representative mechanical engineer civil engineer hydraulics hydrology or coastal engineer mechanical engineering technician, and other interdisciplinary design management positions. Go over to our careers section on our website. The link will be in the show notes. All right, we are going to close out this episode with our last segment, news from around the district. In support of the coronavirus fight, Norfolk District engineers and architects fanned out across Virginia to evaluate and recommend potential sites for construction of alternate care facilities. As a result, the district received three mission assignments in Northern Virginia, Richmond, and Hampton Roads from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The Corps is working quickly to get contracts in place to begin converting Dulles Expo Center in Loudoun County, Richmond Convention Center, and Hampton Roads Convention Center into medical care space. It's expected to provide needed hospital bed capacity for the state. The conversion will include adapting each building's existing infrastructure to support all the needs of a working hospital. The Dismal Swamp Canal between Virginia and North Carolina has resumed its normal operating schedule for vessel traffic. Norfolk District closed that route on the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway shortly after the new year, so work crews could complete a major refurbishment project on two canal gates at South Mills Lock in North Carolina. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, however, there are some changes up and down the AIWW. Vessels and crew entering all locks, including Great Bridge and Chesapeake, must comply with the latest CDC guidance related to coronavirus. No one is allowed to exit the boat and crews must handle their own lines during transit. Progress toward a navigation improvement project for Tangier Island hit a major milestone in March. The Army Corps issued a solicitation for construction of a jetty on the small Chesapeake Bay Island. The jetty will reduce wave attack on the island's harbor and help protect the fishing fleet and crab houses that are a vital economic engine for the community. A contract award is expected this spring. In other news, while schools are closed down to slow the spread of coronavirus, the Norfolk District remains active in support of Department of Defense education activity. The Corps recently exercised one-year options on half a dozen small business contracts for sustainment, restoration, and modernization services at their DIA districts in six regions, including parts of the eastern United States, Puerto Rico, and Cuba. This preventative and repair maintenance contract covers students at every grade level in more than 100 schools. All six are indefinitely delivery, indefinite quantity contracts. The performance period for each runs until next March. 
And finally, the district has awarded a $1.6 million contract to Sumco Eco Contracting to perform maintenance dredging in Bradford Bay on the eastern shore of Virginia. The channel, located in Accomack County, serves as a vital waterway for commercial fishermen and Coast Guard vessels. The contract calls for the removal of nearly 118,000 cubic yards of dredged material to bring the channel to a depth of 7 feet. This marks the first time the district has awarded a contract to the Massachusetts-based construction firm. You can find all these stories and more on our website and social media channels. And that's what's happening around the Norfolk District. Until next time. This is Port Talk. Port Talk is the official podcast of the Norfolk District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Submitting emails or voicemails to Port Talk constitutes permission to use that content as part of the broadcast. Port Talk is recorded at the Norfolk District Headquarters building in Norfolk, Virginia, and is produced by the district's public affairs staff.